Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamic 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is United Kingdom, what's new in making tax digital for VAT in Dynamics 365 Finance? My name is Emily, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live Events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the presentation. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Elisaveta Golb, Senior Program Manager, Adam Turkaka, Senior Program Manager Lead, and Artem Stroenkov, Software Developer. Elisaveta, over to you. Uh, thank you, Emily, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I thank you for joining this Tech Talk session and for your attention to the Making Tax Digital feature. Um, my name is uh, Emily, introduced to Elisaveta Golub, and I am the PM of Dynamics 365 Finance Globalization Team, working on MTD feature. And together with me, uh, my colleagues Adam Trukavka and Artem Strenkov are helping with the Q&A chat where you can ask your ongoing questions. Uh, some of your questions can be also answered in the end of the presentation and offline afterwards. Uh, we will publish the questions and the answers on them after the session together with this deck so that everyone could familiarize with their content after the presentation. Um, let me also encourage you to join our tax declarations uh, group in Yammer. This group is dedicated specifically to topics related to tax declarations of different countries. The link of this group um, will be in the end of the presentation together with other useful links to uh, for today's <clears throat> subject. Uh, this session uh, today is uh, dedicated specifically to the changes that we recently introduced to our solution in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance, supporting the interoperation with the web service of uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs of the United Kingdom for direct submission of digital VAT return. Uh, the changes um, mm, are intended, first of all, uh, to accommodate legal requirements officially published by HMRC on their web portal to send specific types of user audit data when using MTD VAT API to help protect confidential data of companies from criminals and fraudsters. Uh, these specific types of user audit data are also known as fraud prevention headers because they must be sent to HMRC's MTD VAT API as part of HTTP requests headers. Uh, before we start, please kindly take a moment to read our disclaimer. In general, it informs that Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance solution for making tax digital for VAT in the United Kingdom is software under development. All dates and features specified are subject to change without notice, and Microsoft may make changes to specifications and uh, product descriptions at any time without notice. Well, um, as soon as the changes we are going to discuss today are mainly intended to accommodate fraud prevention headers requirement, during this presentation we will first of all overview the basic requirements on fraud prevention headers 
to know which connection methods are supported in our solution and what are the specific types of user audit data that must be sent to HMRC for the supported connection methods when you submit digital VAT return. Next, I will tell what has changed in Dynamics 365 Finance Solution for making that digital for VAT to support fraud prevention headers and how the feature setup has changed with this update. In this part of the presentation, a demo will be provided to better explain the steps of the new setup and also the way how you can validate and make sure that fraud prevention headers are collected entirely. After that, we will talk about when these changes will be available and what options from time and perspective exist to, um, for testing before upgrading your production environment uh, to the version including these changes in MTD feature. Uh, the end of the session will be dedicated to your questions. As I mentioned, um, you are welcome to submit your questions to the Q&A pen of this event. I also um, would like to pay your attention that in the Q&A pen, either already pub published or will be soon, um, you can find a link on a questionnaire about your user experience with um, our solution for making tax digital for VET in Dynamics 365 Finance. Uh, we value super high your opinion and your feedback. This questionnaire is absolutely anonymous and uh, this is really a way to help us to understand how we can make things better for you. Like, for example, starting from the initial release of um, MTD feature, we enabled such capabilities for the feature like reporting for the ET group and reporting for companies with primary address outside of the United Kingdom. These extensions were highly requested and uh, thus prioritized in our backlog basing on your feedback. So please do not hesitate to share with us your feedback. The link on the mentioned questionnaire will also be available on the useful link slide of this presentation and it will be possible to fill it in after the event as well. Okay, uh, let's focus on our main subject and go to the overview of fraud prevention headers requirement in MTD for VAT. As I mentioned in the very beginning, by law, all the HTTP requests sent to MTDVAT APIs of HMRC must include specific types of user audit data. According to information on the HMRC's web portal, you can find this information by the link on this slide. This user audit data is collected to help protect confidential data of companies from criminals and fraudsters. According to official documentation on fraud prevention headers, different sets of fraud prevention headers can be required for different MTD compatible software depending on their architecture. This architecture must be defined preliminary for MTD compatible software, transferred as a value of connection method, header, this is the first fraud uh, prevention header in the set, and uh, full scope of other headers to be collected and transferred will be um, defined by this connection method value. Uh, for Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance, we support two connection methods, web app via server and patch process direct. Depending on whether request to HMRC was initiated in batch or not, system will send automatically the needful set of headers. The BAP via server method is the most commonly used according to our statistics of uh, requests sent via our web application. This slide shows the full set of headers required for both connection methods. Some of them are required for web app via server only, and some of them for batch process direct. 
but most of them are required for both connection methods. So in our discussion during uh, this presentation today, we will not differentiate further by connection methods and we'll talk about them as a whole in general. As you can see from the list, uh, the set of these specific types of user audit data, in fact, uh, 21 different parameters of either user browser, like for example, if do not track option is enabled on the user browser or not, or a list of um, browser plugins, or user device parameters like um, time zone, uh, window size, and uh, screen size. There are also parameters identifying user device and also the product used, uh, including information about its version and hashed license ID. And there are also network parameters like client local IPs and client and server public IPs with the timestamp informing when these network um, parameters are collected. Documentation on fraud prevention headers also states that all the fraud prevention headers must be collected immediately before the request is transferred to MTD API. This means that the moment when system uh, can start um, collecting them is just after the user has initiated the request to uh, MTD API, either to obtain information about VAT obligations of the company or mm, to submit a um, VAT return. Okay, now let me talk about what was changed in MTD VAT feature with the current update. Those users who are using our MTD VAT feature in Dynamics 365 Finance may have already noticed that some of our previous updates already included some set of these headers because we are showing to the user which information was collected and will be sent to MTD VAT API. With the current update, we cover the full scope of required fraud prevention headers for those connection methods that we support for Dynamics 365 Finance in version 3.0, with exception for two of them that cannot be defined uh, for Dynamics 365 Finance. They are Gov Client Multifactor and Gov Client Public Port. For these two headers, specific exception was received from HMRC and it is allowed it to omit these two headers for those companies who are using our web application for interoperation with HMRC's MTD APIs. In addition to this, as soon as uh, starting from this update, the scope of headers was extended and Mm, also, MTD VAT feature was uh, started, uh, sorry, has started collecting public IP addresses. We had uh, to introduce an additional setup for system administrator role, and in addition to that, a new system administrator consent. Thus, starting from this update, system administrator will need to provide a new consent to enable further usage of the feature. Uh, the new version of the feature setup package for electronic messaging provides new client secrets for the production web application. It is recommended in the documentation on MTD um, provided by HMRC to rotate client secret of web application. Current rotation is included into the package and already available on the LCS. Um, this version of the package also includes um, some other minor changes which can be interesting for those companies who are just installing the feature. So in case you are planning an installation of uh, MTD VAT feature in Dynamics 365 Finance, I recommend to download and use this new version of the setup. In this version, actions related to test user 
are excluded from the processing. Fixed uh, missing uh, setup for uh, preview format and also excluded uh, server token of the production application as parameter. As soon as it was uh, just deprecated on HMRC side and it is not used any longer. Well, as you can see, the scope of changes is not so large, but nevertheless, it is important to pay attention to it to avoid any issues and be ready to the next VAT return submission after the upgrade to 10.0.22 or higher version. So now I will tell what the current update includes and uh, then we will move uh, smoothly to the information about the new setup for this upgrade. Well, current update uh, for MTD VAT feature uh, is composed of three parts. Changes become available in finance starting from version 10.0.22. In addition to application upgrade to enable change, uh, you will need to import new version of, um, uh, th of three electronic reporting formats um, and MTD VAT model mapping together with electronic messaging framework model. And the uh, third part of the update is the new version of the package for the feature setup. All the changes in it, as I explained, are mostly optional and um, Later today, I will provide a short additional demo how to use this package to deliver only necessary changes to your system. So here are the steps that you will need to do to get the latest changes in MTD VAT feature. First, you need to upgrade your application to 10.0.22 version or even later. As soon as uh, your application is uh, successfully upgraded, you need to import latest version of MTD VAT web request header format, MTD VAT authorization format, uh, MTD VAT model mapping under electronic messages framework model, and MTD VAT interoperation format under tax declaration model. Next to for MTD VAT uh, web request header format, system administrator will need to provide a new setup. A new application specific parameter was introduced for this format. System administrator will need to speci um, specify internet uh, address of external web services that would uh, send, a just send a response uh, containing public IP addresses. Uh, we do not recommend any particular web service. This should be a web service of company's choice in accordance with their policy and security rules. The process how to set up new application specific parameter will be shown in the demo later today and it is also described in our renovated do documentation on docs. Um, please let me um, make uh, also another small announcement that in the next version for finance in 10.0.23, uh, there is plan to be introduced a new feature in electronic reporting, which is called uh, use application specific parameters from previous version of electronic reporting formats feature in feature management workspace. When this feature is enabled, configure it for the lower version of an electronic reporting format parameters automatically become applicable for the higher version of this format. This feature was introduced to provide more usability and we just noticed that this is not a seldom situation when after an electronic reporting format version upgrade users do not export and import setup of application specific parameters and uh, this results failed execution on the report. So we hope that this feature will help 
to will help to avoid such fails and uh, it will allow using setup of application specific parameters from the previous versions. Thus, after you will upgrade to, to 10.0.23, I recommend to go to feature management, find the use application specific parameters from previous version of electronic reporting formats feature and enable it. This feature will be working for all the reports having application specific parameters in all your legal entities through your system. And uh, the last step of the setup is reauthorization of the production web application. This is very important step of the setup. According to the documentation on HMRC's portal, uh, the reauthorization must be done every 18 months. Thus, those companies who are using the feature from its, in, from its initial release in uh, 2019 could be already requested to reauthorize. In case your company was requested to reauthorize already or was not, and even if you are using the feature significantly less than 18 months, after the upgrade to 10.0.22, you will have to reauthorize so that system administrator provided in you consent to share your data with external system that is governed by HMRC's terms and privacy policy and bear all the risks of uh, using any third party service. This is mandatory condition to use MTDVAT feature further in Dynamics 365 Finance. I will show this process um, to refresh how this should be done. Uh, well, now we are going to the demo. Uh, this demo is pre-recorded and I will be showing it as a recording. Some part of this demo may include either my person identifiable information like my public IP or information about third parties uh, web content. Such type, type uh, of the information is um, in this demo was blurred to not expose information that should not be. Okay, for this demo I use GBSI demo data and here I start from importing of configurations from the global repository. I go to the global repository and uh, search by the MTD prefix the necessary configurations. First of all, it is MTD VAT interoperation format under tax declaration model. Uh, Make sure that you select the necessary version. It is 31.9 and import this format to your system. After this format will be successfully imported to your system, search for another two formats under electronic messages framework model. They are MTDVAT authorization format, first of all, of version 41.13. You should select the necessary version and import it from the repository to your system. Next, another format under the same model is MTD VAT web request header format of 41.45 version. Import it as well. During this import, model mapping of the mm, needed version should also be important and we should make sure that version 4168 exists in your system as a result of format importing just make sure that this is so. And the same for the model, version 41 should be successfully imported to your system as well. After the import is done, we can go to the electronic reporting configurations workspace and find the 
MTD VAT web request headers format that was just imported to your system under the electronic messages framework model. I usually suggest to read the content of the KB article related to a version. For this purpose, you can copy the number of the KB article and use issue search tool of the LCS portal, like it is shown in this demo. The KB article usually contains all the necessary information about the changes introduced in this particular version. Then after that, uh, for this particular format, MTD VAT web request headers format, make sure that it is selected on the left hand side of your browser page and then go to the um, action pane under configurations, search for application specific parameters group and select setup. Here in the setup, uh, we can see that we have uh, in this uh, system two versions of uh, this uh, configuration imported. The previous version does not include any um, application specific parameters. When the new version that was just recently imported contains a new application specific parameter, which is called external service endpoint. For this application specific parameter, we are going to provide the setup. It is assumed that this setup must be done by a system administrator role. Select this application specific parameter and uh, go to the conditions first step. Here in the lookup result, we have two values predefined. And uh, for these two values, we must provide the necessary setup. Um, Gov client public IP lookup result will uh, influence on the result uh, which will be reported to HMRC. In Gov client public IP fraud prevention header. Uh, in this case, client is our um, user's web application browser. Uh, this uh, means that the client public IP is the public IP of the user's device that is used to initiate a request to HMRC. This means that uh, the setup we are going to provide will be applied to the user's uh, device. Like for example, we select Gov client public IP and here in the external service endpoint, system administrator will need to set up an internet address, um, HTTPS address that will be used, will be called during the request sending to HMRC. This means that as soon as the end user, the business user, for example, requests an applications, a VAT applications of the company, a system will call first the specified external web service endpoint. From here, try to obtain the public IP of our client uh, and this public IP from the response of this web service will be included into the header of the request, which will be further transferred to HMRC. All this complex process will be hidden from the business user eyes. So it will be absolutely invisible in case system administrator will set up preliminary this mm, web service here. So uh, basically by using Bing, I can simply find my IP address by using a request of this type. As you can see, to know your IP address is very easy from the internet. You can also use a query like I API public IP to search for a necessary third parties or external web services that could serve for the purpose to obtain the public IP addresses like this. And then to provide the 
HTTP address here in the column external service endpoint like HTTPS and then the address which will be used by the system to obtain the public IP of the client. As it is shown in this demo, you can specify two or even more different web services which will be called by the system uh, during the runtime of the um, sending your requests to HMRC. <clears throat> for vendor public IP and for client public IP, different web services can be defined and used. Um, moreover, different web services may work for different type of the IP address. Like for example, in case you select one uh, web service which perfectly serves for obtaining a client public IP, potentially it may not be useful for the vendor public IP and it can differ. So as soon as this setup is provided, make sure to change the state of this uh, configuration to completed. It is important to change the state to completed uh, because in uh, the in progress state, this configuration will be ignored by the system during the runtime. So as soon as the setup for the application specific parameter is provided, we can simply check, validate how is it working um, or not? Uh, we do not need to go anywhere else. We should stay here in the electronic reporting framework and keep focus on MTDVAT web request header format. Then we can simply click on run button from here and specify here in the web service just the name of the web service that is going to be used for the testing submission, for example. Right now, the system initiated all the necessary methods to collect information for fraud prevention headers. I have also had to hide all this information, um, but uh, make sure when you will be running this format that all of them uh, headers are filled in properly. Uh, pay attention specifically to vendor public IP and uh, client public IP here that they were identified. In case they were not identified properly at this moment, try to use some other web service. Basically, in general scenario, our business user we would uh, mark this checkbox and click on submit button. In our case, now we do not need to submit anything anywhere. So we just close the page and go next to the web applications page. At this moment, uh, all the necessary setup in the electronic reporting is completed. And the next step is in the web applications page. Here we also have a supplementary headers fast up and this is another alternative way how you can define IP addresses. In case you are absolutely sure that uh, the public IP of your client is always the same, for example, you have some specific uh, device to interoperate with HMRC and this device has some static public IP address, then probably you will not need to set up any external web services, but you can simply specify uh, the public IP address here. Um, here I'm just uh, specifying some fake uh, numbers which will be used by the system. This setup will be used only in case system uh, just was not able to obtain an IP address um, in, uh, by using the external web services. So the priority one is for the external web services, then the next one is the supplementary headers. So this is an alternative way to set it up. 
make sure that you will be setting up these uh, parameters for your production application, but not as I am showing here for the sandbox, because in the real life you are using the first application, which is called here Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Well, and uh, another important step here for the system administrator is to provide a new system administrator consent. Even if you have provided previously in the past the first system administrator consent, as it is shown here on the demo, you will need to provide a new consent. And for this purpose, you will need to get the authorization code first. Uh, type the scope like uh, read VAT, write VAT as usually. Click OK. And here it is, the new content uh, of the system administrator. As you can see, it differs a little bit from the previous one and it contains two points. Make sure that you mark that checkbox and read the points that you agree with. Uh, they are to share your data with external system that is governed by HMRC's terms and privacy policy and bear all risks of using any third party service. It is also available links um, here to our privacy statement and the future documentation in case you would like to familiarize with some uh, details. So after a key button is uh, clicked, you are redirected to HMRC's portal and here you can, um, you not can, but you have to uh, provide your user's ID and password. In my case, I will be using a test user and for this purpose, I go to the new API and I will create a test user for organization. I will copy user ID and password to sign in page. And uh, sign in. For the production application, you will be using the user ID and the password obtained from HMRC during your registration for the MTD um, account. OK, and now the authorization was granted. As soon as the authorization code was obtained, we can obtain the access token. As you remember, there are only 10 minutes to obtain this access token. In my case, I will also need to copy the provided VAT registration number related to the test user, and I will use a new additional field in the um, electronic messaging processing. This additional field was introduced just recently in the scope of our multiple VAT registration project. It is very useful for those companies who are running their MTD feature uh, from a legal entity which has uh, several VAT registrations. And now we just can continue obtaining our access token. As we can see, access token was successfully obtained and the new system administrator consent received. You can see it in the action log a new record related to system administrator consent 2021 received. From this moment, our business user may safely start um, using the feature for the business processes. Like for example, we will try to obtain VAT obligations for now. For this purpose, as you already know, we just create a new electronic message and specify the dates. And after that, we just send report by using in our case test retrieve VAT application action. Uh, so now our business user will see 
updated scope of the fraud prevention headers, including public IP addresses. And now business user will need to do the same as in the past, mark the checkbox and click on submit button. And request, as we can see, was successfully completed. Oh, well, the information about uh, VAT obligations was uh, successfully received. Okay, this is all from demo perspective. Uh, thank you for watching it. And now I just um, want to make, in addition, a quick summary about the setup. After electronic reporting configurations are imported, system administrator specify an external web services, internet addresses in the application specific parameter of MTD VAT web request headers format and do not forget to complete it. Then, uh, go through the authorization process and accept the new system administrator consent to enable further feature usage. In case system administrator does not provide a new consent, token of the production web application will not be possible to refresh and no requests will be possible to send to HMRC. Well, that was the most important part of the new setup. And now I will provide information about additional optional changes that are related to the setup of the feature in electronic messages. As I mentioned before, I recommend to download the new version of the package and use it for um, feature installation in the future in case MTD VAT feature was not installed yet. The new package version includes the changes listed in this slide. And first of all, this is a new client secret for production web application. I will show in the second demo how to use this package to import into the system only necessary information from this package. The package also includes the missing format setup for preview action and exclude outdated part of the setup like actions related to the test user and server token of the production application. Important comment here is to not use truncate entity data option during importing the new version of the setup package to prevent issues with uh, historical data related to MTD VAT feature. In case your company is already using the MTD feature and you import setup with this parameter, the old setup records will be replaced with the new ones and your electronic messages created in the past will remain linked to the old records and will not be accessible through the user interface. So now, can watch the demo. It is also pre-recorded in this case only with a consistency purpose. Um, so this demo is recorded using DEMF demo data and I start from the web applications page and um, I just uh, wanted to pay attention where the client secret is uh, stored. This, this field value is never visible from the business uh, user, user, from the user interface, and it is also encrypted in the database. So there is no possibility to see this client secret, but we recommend to refresh it to support the rotation of the client secret process. And as you can see here in the supplementary headers first up, if you imported previously old supplementary headers data entity, there are a lot of different lines here. 
we recommend to delete them all because they will not be considered by uh, the feature any longer except for those three that were shown in the previous demo number one. So to download the new version of the package, just go to the shared asset library of the LCS portal as usually, then move to the data package section and search for the new version of the package. It is easily searchable by the prefix like UK MTD. So we can see a new version is published. Make sure that the name of this package is the one you are looking for and simply import it to your computer. After it is imported uh, to your computer, you can go to data management and create a new importing project. Give it a name of your choice and select the file that was just downloaded from the LCS chart asset library. As soon as the data entities are shown in the grid, delete those entities that already imported to your system and are not needed except for web applications and supplementary headers in case you are going to use the supplementary header setup as alternative way to define public IP addresses of your client and server. Make sure that truncate entity data checkbox is not activated, is not marked. It is no, and then you can safely import. Thus, only the new information will come into your system and uh, the server token, oh, sorry, not server token, client secret will be successfully refreshed. So it, it is not visible from the UI, but it is there together with the three supplementary headers that are supported in the current version of the solution. The same for the sandbox. OK, now we just need to go to the electronic messaging processing and we are going to exclude unnecessary actions related to the test user for the test processing. <clears throat> there are three actions related to the test user. They are not supported any longer in electronic reporting configuration. So in case you will try to run them, you will find a new validation that they are not supported. And here I'm um, paying attention again to the uh, new tax registration number additional field, which we recommend to use instead of the general VAT registration for the companies with multiple VAT registrations. So, short summary of what we was uh, of what was shown <clears throat> in the second demo we watched how to import new production application client secret from the package and exclude unnecessary supplementary headers set up and leave only those three which can be potentially used as alternative to usage of external web services for public ip and we also excluded unnecessary actions related to test user because now HMRC's developer portal provides possibility to generate a test user in a more useful way. <clears throat> well, now we can talk about when these changes will be available and can be installed. As I already mentioned, the first 
two parts of fraud prevention headers were delivered for Dynamics 365 Finance quite some time ago. First package is available since 10.03 version, and then in 10.05 version there was an ex uh, uh, extension delivered. Um, now the current update that covers full scope of fraud prevention headers according to version 3.0 is included in version 10.022 of finance application. You can use a um, service update availability section on docs.microsoft.com or by the link from this slide for more and actual information on dates on the monthly updates. According to ca uh, current plan, version 10.022 is now already available for, from September 3rd for those companies who are registered as early adopters and um, mm. participate in uh, the release validation program in PIP. On 23rd of October, version 10.022 will be generally available for upgrades of production environments. Before that, in the end of September, this version will become available for sandboxes environments, and it will be possible to try this feature update on your sandboxes. Okay. Mm, well, now we are in the end of my prepared content for this presentation. And before we go to your questions, let me make one more small announcement related to the MTDVAT feature documentation. Just um, early in this morning, um, the new version of the MTDVAT feature documentation was published officially, and now it is already available for everyone. The long read topic was uh, split into several subtopics by common sense. For example, for setup, um, you now have a specific subsection with step-by-step -step guidance on how to set up the feature. There is also a checklist which can be used to check your setup in case you face some issues during the feature setup. A new content um, about VAT setup details specific to UK was also added. So here you can also check for some VAT setup things and also how the boxes are calculated basing on the setup of application specific parameters of the VAT declaration in electronic reporting. In the end of this subsection, some examples of uh, setup are also included to better illustrate how some scenarios <clears throat> will impact your VAT uh, declaration. This renovation was also done basing on clients and partners' feedback, and I hope you will find this new version as more useful and helpful for your projects and feature usage. Well, thank you very much for your attention during the presentation and I think we can go to the Q&A section. And uh, let me probably start with uh, sharing some questions and preliminary to this session. Um, we were receiving lots of questions. Um, <clears throat> on uh, when uh, version three of fraud prevention will be supported. And I hope this question was uh, clarified during the presentation. Ah, and here is the question I would like to voice. It is related to AX 2012R3. As you probably know, this product is going to be out of our support starting from October 12, 2021, which is about in one month and uh, after this date we do not plan to release any updates to the MTD VAT feature as well for AX 2012 R3. Uh, thus in case any changes will be coming for this uh, feature 
just changes in requirements, I mean, we will not be able to support them. At the same time, the application, the web application granted by HMRC for AX2012 R3 will still be available for some time, but for those companies who are using this product and do not have any plans to move to the cloud version, for them it would be probably a good idea to start getting their own web applications from HMRC to be safe in case at some point, at some moment, web application granted by HMRC for AX2012 R3 will become unavailable. Currently, the MTDVAT feature in AX2012 R3 covers also the full scope of fraud prevention headers with the recently uh, released hotfix with KB number. Let me check. Uh, 4623486 uh, with the same exception for the same two headers. So the same exception was obtained for X2012 R3 for Gov client or Gov uh, multiple. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot how this header is called. Okay, for the, for the same two fraud prevention headers as. I told uh, for Dynamics 365 Finance. Okay, Adam, please let me know if there are any unanswered questions left that we could try to answer now. We have about one to two minutes left. Or probably there are some questions that you would like to voice and comment. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, Lisa, there was a couple of questions I answered already about the, the one of the repeating question, which was like uh, asked uh, that this update of fraud prevention headers is uh, published in version 22. What about the previous versions? I, I guess it I'll, was already covered, right? Yeah, partially, partially you, you covered that in previous slides. So actually the answer is that this is one of the three updates related to fraud prevention headers, right? This one is the most critical and people need to pay attention because of this public IP, which each MRC requires to send. Uh, but also uh, there should be the HMRC does not uh, state if they will be rejecting the transmission if, uh, if those headers are not uh, uh, filled, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Adam. Um, closing the event, let me remind that on the last page of the deck, you will find some useful links which can help to simplify your search of the necessary information related to the feature. And there is also a link on the questionnaire about your user experience with MTDVH feature in Dynamics 365 Finance. I encourage you to share your feedback with us to help us making the things better for you. And uh, closing the event, let me thank my colleagues and Tech Talk platform team for organizing the session and helping me with the Q&A today. Our colleagues from the support team for delivering all the important information and also to all and everyone who helped to distribute the invitation on this event and help to make it happen. Thank you all very much and have a great day ahead. Emily, back to you. Thank you. I posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd like your feedback on today's session and to hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today.